In this video, I'm sharing 12 ChatGPT tips with you to help you get more out of it, even if you've been using it for a while. These tips not only save me time, but they've unlocked better answers, better prompts, and more secure results overall. So let's jump right in. The first tip is an awesome way to not only get better results from ChatGPT, but also to learn to become a better prompter yourself. Ask ChatGPT to help you improve your prompt. So let's say you have a business and you wanna write an email response to a customer inquiry about your product. You might give it a generic prompt initially, like help me write an email response to a customer inquiry about our workout leggings. And maybe the results aren't quite what you wanted. So instead of getting frustrated, you can say, improve my previous prompt to make it more detailed and specific. Tell me what other information I should include to get a better output. And you can see what it comes up with and then tweak your original prompt based on the feedback that it's giving you. This is a powerful hack that I use all the time. Next up, tip number two is a really powerful feature that I've found to be very useful. And that is to upload an image to ChatGPT and ask it questions about the image. For this type of task, I use the 4.0 model, which is available in both the free and the paid versions, although the free version has a smaller, much smaller usage limit. Now, let's say you have a really complicated image or graphic that you don't quite understand, kind of like this one. Just upload it to ChatGPT and say, can you tell me about this image or explain this chart to me and it will break it down for you just like this. Or here's a fun one that I use all the time. You could even take a picture of ingredients that you have in your house that you want to turn into a dish, upload it and ask ChatGPT based on these ingredients, what's a simple recipe that I can make? And it will actually do it. I did this the other day for banana pancakes and got an amazing recipe. So. I use this all the time for meal ideas. All right, so now you're getting better prompts and you can see what ChatGPT can do with images. Tip number three has been a huge time saver for me and that is enabling custom instructions. Custom instructions are available to all ChatGPT users within an account, both free and paid. So to do this, you're gonna go to the icon at the top, click on settings and then click personalization and then click custom instructions. This feature allows you to give ChatGPT your specific preferences and context about you so that it makes the conversation feel more relevant to you and gives you more control over the output. It also saves you from having to repeat yourself, making your workflow more efficient. You can tell it what you do. For example, if you have a business, let's say you're in the sustainable, eco-friendly home goods industry, you can put that there. Or if you use ChatGPT for work, you can put your role there and any information that would be helpful about what you do. And then you can define what traits you want ChatGPT to have. Maybe you want it to be friendly, but professional or take a forward thinking view. You can also share anything else that you think ChatGPT should know about you right at the bottom. And then you can enable for new chats by toggling that button at the bottom there where it says enable for new chats. When you're done, hit save. And now your ChatGPT is customized. Coming in at number four, here's a powerful tip for getting the most out of ChatGPT. Choose the AI model that best fits your task, whether it's brainstorming, writing, or analysis. It's like when you wanna fix something around your house, you're gonna get a better result if you use the right tool. Same concept here. But with all the ChatGPT models that have been released lately, that could be easier said than done. My head is honestly still spinning with all the updates, but I'll tell you the ones I'm using and for what purposes. Now, if you're using the free plan, you don't have as many model options. You'll likely start with the 4.0 model, which is the default model and is a great all around option for various different tasks. I use it for multimodal tasks like uploading images, files, brainstorming, some writing tasks, and even analyzing documents. Now, just an FYI that I'm using the $20 paid plan. Now, free users have a limit on the amount of GPT-40 messages that they can send. And then after you reach the cap, you'll switch over to the 4.1 mini model. The 4.1 mini model is ideal for simple writing, quick queries, straightforward everyday type of tasks. Now under the paid $20 plan, you get more model options aside from just the 4.0 model and the 4.1 mini model. When I'm using ChatGPT for things where I need a high degree of emotional intelligence, like for creative writing or for customer facing content, I would personally use the 4.5 model for that. Now, if I'm doing research or analyzing a more lengthy or complex technical report, I would personally use the O3 model for that, which works really well as 
as a deep multi-step reasoning model. Now, based on what I've read, OpenAI is set to combine their GPT and O-series models into one single tiered system with the launch of their GPT-5 model, which is expected in the second half of 2025. So that should really simplify their models and make it easier to pick the best ones for your tasks. So we'll stay tuned for that. This next tip on the list has made writing a whole lot easier. Number five on the list is using ChatGPT's Canvas. If you're still copying text from ChatGPT into Word or Google Doc and then editing that and then pasting that back to ChatGPT again, using Canvas is gonna be way more efficient for you. Let's say you want help with drafting up a blog post about wearable fitness technology accessories. You're gonna to go to the three dots under the prompt box and click Canvas. And then you're gonna give it your prompt. You are an accomplished author with 20 years of experience. You're also a fitness technology expert. Generate an amazing outline for a blog post about the top 10 best wearable fitness technology accessories. Then you're gonna see a split view and the chat is gonna be on the left and the document editor is on the right. So you can prompt in the chat or you can edit the document directly in the canvas on the right side. Now in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you're gonna see some other options that you can make to the text to make the editing more intuitive. There's suggested edits, which is basically ChatGPT suggesting certain edits to be made to the text. Then you can also adjust the length. You can make it longer or shorter. And you can also adjust the reading level from kindergarten all the way to graduate school, which is pretty awesome. And then you can add a final polish to it. So those final finishing touches to the text Text, and you can also add emojis as well. And guess what? The Canvas feature is also available to free and paid members because you can use it with the 4 model. Coming in at number six is to use custom GPTs. So what are custom GPTs? Think of them as specialized versions of ChatGPT that have been tailored by OpenAI, other creators, or you to excel on specific tasks, topics, or skills. So to go to custom GPTs, you're gonna click on Explore GPTs over here on the left-hand side of the screen. And that brings you to this page, which is like a store or library full of different types of GPTs that are ready-made specialized AI assistants. Now, the cool thing about custom GPTs is that they come preloaded with custom instructions, specific knowledge, and they can be optimized for that purpose. So instead of spending time writing super detailed prompts to give to ChatGPT and the right context every single time that you wanna do something specific, a custom GPT is already that expert. Now you can use many specialized custom GPTs from the Explore GPT section on both the free and paid plans without paying extra for each GPT. So if you're on the free plan, then you'll get to try these, but you'll probably have some tight usage limits. Now, if you're on the paid plan, then you can actually create your own custom GPT from scratch. So to do that, you're gonna click on the plus sign at the top right here. And it'll also ask you some questions about what you wanna do in the chat, et cetera, et cetera. Once you answer the questions, it'll come up with a name for it. And when you're ready, then you click create and that's it. Now you have your own custom GPT. So if you guys wanna see more on custom GPTs, I can always do a future video on that. Next up, number seven, if you have a prompt that you use repeatedly really often, you can actually ask ChatGPT to remember it for you using its memory feature. Let's say you do a lot of speeches and you ask ChatGPT for help on speaking notes or speeches that you want to do, and you often use the same prompt over and over again. You could say something like this. Can you add this prompt as a memory since I use it so often? You are a world-class speaker and best-selling author with 20 years of experience, and you understand extremely well how to keep an audience's attention. Please give me an awesome outline for my speech that is highly likely to perform well. And there you go. It says, got it. That prompt is saved now. I'll keep it in mind whenever you're working on a speech. Just let me know the topic and the audience and I'll tailor an out outline that's engaging and impactful. Perfect. So now if we click on updated saved memory right here in the chat and then click on manage, we can see it's right in there it's as part of the memories that we have, which is exactly what we want. So now when you ask for help with speeches, you don't have to give that full persona brief every time. So that saves tons of time. Now, tip number eight is seriously cool and an incredibly useful way to use ChatGPT's image generator, especially if you have products to showcase. It's all about transforming your existing product photos into entirely new scenes. So you give ChatGPT an image of your product and then tell it to completely put it into a new setting but maintain the same look and style of the product. Okay, so to show you how this works, let's use a bottle of date syrup as our example. 
First, you're gonna upload the product image just like this, and then you're gonna craft your new scene prompt, something like this, okay? ChatGPT, take this exact bottle of date syrup from the image I just uploaded. I want you to place it in a new scene. And I talk about like a wooden kitchen table, part of a healthy breakfast setup, add a small bowl of oatmeal topped with fresh berries next to it, et cetera, et cetera. And this is what it generated. I think the new image looks really good and it kept the look of the original date syrup bottle really well, aside from like a couple of misspelled tiny words that you can hardly even tell, but that's really minor, but I think it's super handy for e-commerce and marketing. And I'm using the 4.0 model to generate these images, which means that if you're on the free or paid plan, you can, you can access this, but the free plan is gonna have a much lower usage limit. So if you need stunning product visuals, then definitely try this out. Now, tip number nine is to use the schedule tasks feature. This is something that I've been using quite a bit lately and it's been working really well. Now I know that schedule tasks have been around for a while, but what is a little bit more new is the fact that it can be used with now the O3 model and the O4 mini model. So if you need a little bit more reasoning in the tasks that you wanna to give to ChatGPT, then now you have a better option. Now, just a quick heads up that you do need to be on a paid plan to use the scheduled tasks feature. Now, here's one example of how I really like to use it. I'm gonna type in here basically for it to send me a summary of all the major AI news that's happened in the previous 24 hours. And if no major news, then just say no news. Perfect, and now you can see that it says here, I'll send you a daily AI news roundup starting in about two minutes because I wanted to show that the email came through and all that stuff, that's why I did that. So as you can see here with one simple written prompt, I've had it create a daily recurring task for me, which is pretty neat. So then if you click on the task itself, you could see here, there's the instructions telling me to send you a summary of all the major news that's happened in the previous 24 hours on AI, perfect. And you can then click on your icon at the top right corner where all the settings are and you can click on schedule tasks and you'll see the task is right there. Now, if you go to settings under notification, you'll be able to see that the uh, tasks have a push and email option. So you can select which ones you want. I've selected both here so that I'll get the email notification once the task is completed. All right, so I'm gonna just show you what the email notification looks like. So you're gonna see an email pop in your inbox like this. You click on it. When you click, there's a link and click on that green box and it brings you right back to the same chat. And you can see in this case, there was no news, that's fine. Perfect, it's completed the task. Another cool tip on the scheduled tasks uh, feature is that you can actually ask it something like this, based on what you know about me, what are some tasks that you would suggest that I automate? And it will give you some really good personalized productivity advice. So that's another thing I recommend doing. The next tip on this list is to use the mobile app. The mobile app has all the power that you're used to from the desktop version right in your pocket convenient for when you're on the go. You can take a picture of something with your phone and then upload it and ask ChatGPT questions just like we talked about earlier. You can also use the fantastic voice feature, which is really great for hands-free interaction when you want to do quick brainstorming, you want a quick answer to a question, but you're not able to type at that moment. It's great to just be able to bounce things back and forth. Here's two really cool use cases that I'm enjoying with the mobile app. The first one is the ability to practice speaking a different language with the voice feature. I speak French fluently, but I've lost a lot of it over the years because I didn't have anybody to practice with. But that's all changed with this voice feature, which is super awesome. So let me show you how this works. So on the screen, you're gonna click on the bottom right-hand corner where there's the lines there, and that's gonna activate your voice feature. So I'll show you quickly. Bonjour, je veux pratiquer mon français. Pouvez-vous m'aider? Bien sûr, Alicia. Ce serait un plaisir de t'aider à pratiquer ton français. De quoi aimerais-tu parler aujourd'hui? And there you go. Pretty cool. The second thing I really like to use the mobile app for is actually taking pictures of a presentation when I don't have the time to take notes and it will actually digitize the notes for me. So I took a picture of a whiteboard and I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. All right, so I'm uploading a picture of the whiteboard with notes on it, my own handwriting, and it's gonna be able to actually pick out the information and tell me exactly what it says. So watch this. Wow, super accurate. That's exactly what it says. It can actually read my writing, which is pretty impressive. So there you go, another really cool use case. All right, number 11 is a super useful tip for when you don't want your chat history saved and you don't want your information to be used to train the model. For those moments, use the temporary chat feature. Think of it like incognito mode for your AI interactions. Anything you say there won't be saved in ChatGPT's memory, 
or your chat history. So to start a temporary chat, you're gonna click on the top right-hand corner of the screen where it says temporary with those dotted lines there in the circle. And then once you do that, your temporary chat has started. And now your entire conversation will be private. This is really handy when you're dealing with sensitive information or you just really don't want the chat to be saved. And when you're done, all you have to do is click on new chat at the top left-hand corner of the screen and you won't see it appear in your history. So there you go. Now, if you're working with confidential information or sensitive information and you don't want your information to be used to train the models, but you do want to save the chat history that you have, here's what you do. You're gonna to wanna to turn off the improve the model for everyone setting. So here's how to do this. You're gonna click on the profile at the top right-hand corner of the screen. From there, go to settings. And then next you're gonna click on data controls. And then you're gonna see a toggle for improve the model for everyone. So you're gonna just switch that off. And by doing this, your data stays more private and your chat history still remains available for use. These settings are available for both the free and the paid plans. And the final tip number 12 is super simple, but has saved me tons of time. And that is renaming my conversations, my, my chats, and using the search function to retrieve specific chats. So renaming your chat to something meaningful and then being able to search for the chat that you're looking for saves you from scrolling manually through endless chats to find what you need. This might seem like a simple thing, but it makes a huge difference in staying organized. So fire up your chat TPT and give these tips a try. I hope this was helpful and gives you a really good sense of how to get more out of chat GPT to help you in both your personal and professional life. And if you enjoyed this video, then please show me your support by hitting the like button. It really helps the channel. And if you wanna know more about how you can use AI every day, then click this next video.